Hi, this is Andrea Kane, and I'm here with you on HIT 292 Healthcare Reimbursement. We are on week 12, and we are looking at all things outpatient Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement. This is video number two of seven, and on this video, we are going to focus on the ambulance fee schedule. If you are following along in your book, it's page 149. So let's talk about ambulances. They are a covered service. Medicare Part B provides beneficiary coverage for ambulance services. They will provide transport service only if other means are inadvisable based on the beneficiary's medical condition. Provide it, the, the transport service will be provided to the nearest facility that is able to provide services for that patient's condition. And the transport is typically from one hospital to another, to home, or to an extended care facility. Some types of providers, you have ambulance service entities that are associated with a medical facility, like a hospital. Um, you also have independent ambulance service entities that can pro be providing services, or they may be um, owned by the local community, government, county, that sort of thing. There are suppliers, again, that are not associated with a medical facility, independent insurance co or ambulance companies. Um, reimbursement is based on the level of service provided to the beneficiary, and there are seven levels of service. If you look at the bottom of page 149, you will see these seven levels. And they are basic life support, BLS, advanced life support level one, advanced life support level two, specialty care transport, paramedic ALS intercept, fixed wing air ambulance, and rotary wing air ambulance. Fixed wing would be like an airplane, rotary, rotary wing would be helicopter. There are two types of transports, which we talked about, ground and air. Um, basic life support, advanced life support level one, advanced life support level two, specialty care transport, and paramedic ALS intercept. Those are all ground. And it's only fixed wing or rotary wing that are air. There are also nine patient or payment levels. And you can see this in table 7.11 on page 150. You have to have physician certification in advance if you're doing a non-emergency transport. So make sure that you realize this. If, they, if it's a non-emergency transport, you have to have physician certification in advance. Um, if it is, and that's for repetitive. If it's not repetitive, then you need physician certification within 21 days after the transport. And this, is, again, is non-emergency transport. And this talks about immediate response and re regional, should be regional, variations. And what this is talking about, that an additional payment is made to ambulance providers and suppliers who furnish immediate response services in emergency medical situations. And that's where you get the BLS or advanced life support level one or advanced support level two. So ALS, BLS, those ones are typically from service to an, like a 911 call number, that sort of thing. And so they get an additional payment for that. And then, of course, they look at regional variations as to um, where they're located geographically. And there is a GPCI for ambulance as, that is applied. And it talks about if there is a multiple patient transport, sometimes um, ambulances will take more than one patient. Example, in a motor vehicle crash, they might be able to take two or three together at the same time, depending on how um, severely injured they are. And so there you've got mileage split between patients. They use the modifier GM and um, CMS prorates the payment for each Medicare beneficiary.
if it's a deceased payment patient and this is something you need to know deceased patient um <clears throat> If they're pronounced dead before the ambulance is called, there is no payment made to the ambulance supplier or provider because it really should be at that point, whether you're dealing with a coroner or you're dealing with a funeral home, an undertaker. So that's why if a patient is pronounced dead before the ambulance is called, that's why there's no payment. When a patient is pronounced dead after the ambulance has been called, but before it arrives, they will pay a BLS base rate for ground transport mileage will not be reimbursed. But if the patient is pronounced dead during the ambulance transport, payment rules are followed just as if the patient was alive because the patient was alive to begin with. So make sure you know those three and the fact that the Hicks Picks Level 2 modifier QL is reported um, when, a, when the patient is pronounced dead after the ambulance is called. And of course, we've talked about modifiers before, and hopefully you've talked about those with Shelly Grant in her CPT coding classes. So I'm not going to um, spend a whole lot of time, but they do note that, okay, there's a, a level two modifier GM, there's a level two modifier QL, and then there's also QM and QN that you're gonna wanna be aware of. Medical conditions list. Um, this is on page 152, and it's determining the level of service guideline. And so Medicare CMS has provided an updated Medicare medical conditions list that's to be used in, conduct, in conjunction with the ambulance fee schedule. This came out February of 2007. And at the top of page 152, they give you um, two figures. One is ambulance origin and destination modifier example. The next one is foundation of ambulance fee schedule. You'll really want to go through figure seven six and seven seven because they talk they walk you through an example of calculation of ambulance fee schedule, what the foundation is, and then an example of that. And then you can see an excerpt of the ambulance medical conditions list in figure seven point eight on the bottom of page one fifty three. And this is it for ambulance. Um, it finishes up on page 154 in your book, so make sure that you read all the way through there. I will be back shortly with video number three on the hospital outpatient, outpatient perspective payment system.